Hi, my name's Ken Brown and I've held a few putts in my time over the years playing a couple of Ryder Cups. I'm going to give you a few tips that hopefully will help you hold a few more one putts. Covering everything from your setup to your grip, getting that just right and judging the distance right. I guarantee this book helps you hold more putts. <laughs> Well, with golf, there are so many different shapes and designs, and I brought one or two that usually live up in my loft of um, oldies. Here's one, a very old-fashioned blade putter. That's what Jack Nicklaus used, that type of putter. Then you get the more interesting shapes. Look at this baby, a great big-headed one called Big Ed. He's an absolute beauty. Here's another one. This is the putter Jack, Jack, Big Jack used in 1986 to win the Masters. It's like a, a ping answer type shape, but made of aluminium, a lightweight one, but massive big head high moment of inertia. Here's one that I really love. I think it was about the late 80s, mid 80s. Dave Peltz came up with the idea of lining these three balls up like this to help with alignment. Well, you've seen that since then, but this is his original one. They were plastic balls with a big long head and had a funny feel, but it helped you line the balls up. That was the theory. And there's a couple of zebra putters. They were dynamite in the days, but I bet you've not seen two like these two. Look at those for a couple of babies. See? Almost eye baffling, isn't it? This one's got the funny way of how the shaft comes out. Then the more conventional types. So there's all sorts of different shapes, and this is the one I used to use, the old hickory. <laughs> that looks a bit ordinary compared to those. But no matter what putter you choose, there are three main key factors. You've got to get the lie right, which is the angle between the shaft and the sole of the club. Now, if you get that on the, and it sits up like that, what happens is that when the club hits it, it tends to twist. It's very hard to deliver the face consistently if the lie of the putter doesn't lie quite cosily on the ground. If you have the toe up in the air or the heel up in the air, it's more difficult. The next thing, of course, is the weight. How, does it, how much does it weigh? And a nice, decent bit of head weight is always handy. And if your putter isn't heavy enough, you can always add a bit of lead tape to the back of it. So that's an important thing. That's a personal choice. So you've got the loft as well. That's also absolutely critical. People think, well, why do you have a loft on a putter? Because I just want to run it on the ground. Well, when a ball lands on a green, you've got to imagine it's 1.68 inches. Some of it is settled into the grass. And to get the ball out of that little depression that it naturally lands in, nothing you can do about it, you need a bit of loft. And most putters have a sort of six to two degrees of loft. And at delivery, you want about four degrees. So the ball just pops out of the hole and that gets it rolling more consistently. So we've got the loft, we've got the lie, we've got the weight and the length. Absolutely vital as well. They get the putter the right length. They vary in length, as you know, the long putters, short putters, middle length putters. In fact, in fact, the shortest putter you can have is 18 inches, but you can have it as long as you like. So having that right, the right length allows you to take the right posture. So there's a lot of things to choose. There's a design, but you need the loft, the lie, the length and the weight to be just right. And if you can get that right with your putter, it's actually more important than the design. Look at this babe. How do you grip a putter? You see so many different styles of where you can grip a putter. Well, there's a couple of key things that are absolutely vital when you're putting. No matter what style you do, ideally you want your palms facing each other. You want your right palm, if you're a right-hander, facing down the target line, and you want your left palm facing that. So no matter whether you use a conventional grip, an overlap grip, a cross-hand grip, your palms are always facing each other. You see the way someone does it like this, sort of pencil type grip. But the key factor is to make sure those palms are facing each other. So that when you're putting, they work together, their hands work together. If one hand dominates, then that happens. The club face twists, opens and closes. Also, grip tension is vital. How tight do you grip a putter? Well, I always likened it to perhaps how tight would you grip a bird? If you're holding onto a bird, you don't want to let it escape. You've got to grip it tight enough to do that, but you don't want to squeeze it. So just light enough. So if you're judging it between one and ten, and one you're almost letting go, 10 is as tight as you possibly can. Between four and five gives you the best grip pressure. So make sure your palms are facing each other when you're addressing a putt. Make sure you're not gripping it too tight or too lightly, because a, a tight grip you lose all the feel. And then you can get your hands working together. It's very important that the grip stays consistent between the two hands, and then the hands work together, it gives you a nice rhythm to the stroke, and it allows you to deliver that club square more often. So it's as simple as that. Palms, don't grip it too tight, and make sure those hands are working together. And perhaps, you never know, boom, you might nudge a few more putts in. Hi, my name's Ken Brown, and I've held a few putts in my time over the years playing a couple of Ryder Cups. I'm going to give you a few tips that hopefully will help you hold a few more one putts. Covering everything from your setup to your grip, getting that just right, and judging the distance right. 
I guarantee this book helps you hold more pats. <laughs>Well, there are a few key things when you take up a stance when you're trying to hold putts. And one of them, the most critical one, first of all, is to feel comfortable over the ball and avoid too much tension. But in saying that, you've also got to keep stable. So no matter what width of stance you have, it's absolutely vital. When you stand over the ball, you feel comfortable, natural, not too much tension, but you avoid any movement. Because any movement when you're moving at a putt, what you're trying to do is strike the ball in a small little sweet spot time and time again. And if you're moving around, that becomes very tricky. It's like a snooker player when he's having a snook. If he moves his head, he's going to miss hit it. So stability and comfortableness is absolutely critical. Another thing I always think, if you can address the ball in the position you'd like to be impact, it's a great way of doing it because one, it eliminates any compensations you have to make in your stroke. And two, it's another way of delivering the club squarely. So you set up in the spot you'd like to be in at address. Now, the stance width, not too, not too relevant, I don't think as long as you're stable and feel comfortable. And then addressing the ball in the position you'd like to be impact. You don't want to address it there, there, there. So you get your hands just slightly leading, perfect grip, and you want to return the putter there at impact. Ball position. Well, the ball position, I think, should be, let's just drop a ball down, on the lowest point of your arc. So when you take your stance, take a few practice strokes and see where the putter just grazes the grass through the ball. And that's where the ball should be in the stance. It's simple. So be balanced, get the ball in the right position, and that will give you the best chance, time and time again, of hitting that tiny weeny sweet spot. Let's have a go. Yummy. Well, what is the sweet spot on a putter face, which is, is so key to hit if you're going to be consistent with putting? Well, it's the spot on the putter face where the club doesn't twist. So if you hit the, the ball on this toe here, you can see how the putter face twists. If you hit it towards the heel, it doesn't. Now, this is a putter, it's a big one, the one that Jack Nicklaus used in 1986, so it's quite nice to demonstrate. But when you hit it right off the middle, and I say the middle, not necessarily the middle, the, the spot where the putter doesn't twist, and that runs across the face and up and down the face as well, funnily enough. If you hit the ball there time and time again, if you use the same putter of the same weight, and you hit the sweet spot, no matter what its design is, the ball goes virtually the same. So knowing where that sweet spot is absolutely critical. A lot of putters these days, like this one, it's got it marked. And if it isn't, now funnily enough, this is the putter that Jack Nicklaus used to use for most of his career, which is called a Bristol Wizard, a very old-fashioned looking blade type putter. And this is the one he used to win all those majors, apart from in 86. Now this is very interesting. Just watch what happens with this putter here. See on the toe, it keeps twisting. But even in the middle of the face, the putter is still twisting on you. So the sweet spot on this putter is very near the heel, not necessarily in the middle. So if you've got a putter without the sweet spot marked, give it a bit of a tap, see where it doesn't twist. And then with a pencil, just put a little line on it first, make sure it's in the right spot, and uh, then you can cut it in. Big Jack, I think, had two little lines cut in the top of his putter to mark where the sweet spot is, and it certainly wouldn't have been in the middle of this one. So knowing that sweet spot is critical, absolutely vital. If you can hit the ball consistently out of it and knowing where it is doesn't half help, I guarantee you'll hold more putts. Touch and feel. Well, you get that through good technique and being able to strike the ball out of that sweet spot. And people often ask me when I'm doing the Augusta stuff, how do you judge the pace? Well, feel and touch, you can't teach anyone feel and touch. You can only develop it, sort of acquired. But in my book, there's one or two ways of doing it. This is one I learned years ago, 1977, with Peter Butler, who was a Ryder Cup player, and he was doing this simple drill. He had three balls, and he had a beautiful touch. And he didn't aim at a hole. He just rolled one ball, and then tried to roll the other two tight to it. So he picked a spot, he rolled it across the green, and from there, it was like putting bowls. He tried to roll the next one to it, and the next one to it. And when you get it just right, and the autumn nestles together like in a little nest, it helps to develop that touch and feel. So if you want to develop the feel of a putt, that's a great way of doing it. Take three balls, roll them across the green, and try and roll them together in a little patch like that. And if you can do that, you'll be spot on.